Hello children, this is your physics teacher Sharma and welcome to today's class. In the previous class we, uh, we have discussed about human eye okay, wherein we learnt about different parts of eyeball and what are their functions. In today's class we will be discussing about the second part of the chapter that is colorful world. Okay. Now before going into the topic I would like to introduce a, top, a small part called total internal reflection. total internal reflection we know that whenever the light ray is traveling from rarer medium to denser medium it is bending towards the normal on the other hand if the light ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium the light ray would bend away from the normal light ray coming like this if this is the normal it would bend away from the normal right if I increase the angle of incidence by a little the angle of refraction this angle of refraction also increases if I continue like that at a certain point for a certain angle of incidence the angle of refraction would be 90 degrees that means the light ray would be scraping along the surface okay so this angle of incidence okay for which the angle of refraction is 90 degrees is called critical angle and this critical angle is denoted by IC angle IC what happens if the angle of incidence is more than critical angle see if the angle of incidence is more than critical angle the light ray would not refract anymore but it will reflect back obeying laws of reflection this process in which if the angle of incidence in the denser medium is more than the angle of is more than the critical angle then the light ray instead of refracting would reflect back into the same medium this process is called total internal reflection now coming to the second part that is dispersion we have a common experience to see that whenever light ray is made to pass through a prism okay that would be splitting this light ray preferably the white color light ray when it enters into the glass from air okay it splits into seven different colors okay this splitting of white light into seven different colors is called dispersion okay so dispersion of light is nothing but splitting of one colored light or white light into all its constituent seven different colors okay now this dispersion is observed very clearly in a prism now does it mean that the prism actually produces colors the answer is no prism never produced colors okay let us say how I will consider a prism and say a monochromatic light or white light is made to okay monochromatic light is different from white light white light it is understood it is combination of seven different colors that is what we understand when we are passing white light through the prism it is splitting into seven colors that is because this white light is made up of seven different colors whereas monochromatic light the meaning of the word monochromatic light mono means one chromatic color okay so single color light okay so i allow white light to pass through the prism okay this white light will split into 
seven different colors. Okay, I have drawn only three lines because of the space congestion. Okay, now out of these seven different colors, let us assume there is also a color which is which I will show with a green sketch. Okay, now this green color, I would filter it off and block all the remaining colors. Okay, I would block all remaining colors and I will allow only green color to pass. Okay, now what happens? Now we see that only this green color would be coming out. Now I will place another prism in an inverted position. Now this green light enters Okay, undergoes refraction and it comes out. This is the angle of incidence, it bends away from the normal, so it comes out like this. You see that there is no new color observed there. Okay, the same green color light is actually coming out from the other end. Now, from this we understand that this prism is not producing any color. White light is having all seven colors in itself, which are splitting upon passing through the prism. So this process in which splitting of colors, different colors happens is called dispersion. This is naturally observed in case of a rainbow. Let us see how. See rainbow is formed because of rain and this is the shape of a raindrop okay each and every raindrop behaves like a prism and here comes a light ray white light that is coming from the sun okay and it is incident in such a angle that it is more than critical angle okay so the light ray is entering into the raindrop and it is incident in such a way that the angle of incidence is more than critical angle. When the angle of incidence is more than critical angle, it will undergo total internal reflection and come. Okay. Now here I would like to mention when the light ray is entering into this raindrop, it is not only refraction that is taking place, but also dispersion. That means here another color that also undergoes total internal reflection and there is another color that also undergoes total internal reflection. So like that we are having a different colors form and total internal reflection taking place in every case. So we are having all different colors coming out separately from a raindrop. So this is how a rainbow is formed. And this is the example for total internal reflection as well as dispersion of light together. Okay. Now, what is this refraction? We know refraction means it is a bending of light rays when it is traveling from optically rarer medium to optically denser medium or one transparent medium to another transparent medium for that matter, vice versa. Whether it is denser to rarer or rarer to denser. Okay, now atmospheric refraction. This term in itself shows that our atmosphere is also subject that or it is supporting the refraction process. How? Remember the chief source of light sun is giving its energy which is passing through vacuum. So vacuum that means this nothing. So from that it is entering into earth's atmosphere. So it is understood that it is traveling from a relatively rarer medium to a denser medium. Okay. So when that is happening it should be understood that the light rays are bending after entering into the atmosphere. Also from your uh, social you have learned that the thickness of our atmosphere is not constant and the density of different gases which are there at different levels of the atmosphere also keeps changing. Above all the atmosphere is also in motion with relative to earth. Keeping all these things in consideration we can understand why we see different interesting phenomenon okay 
One of those is twinkling of stars. You might have noticed that there are few stars in the sky which don't twinkle, but there are few stars which twinkle. Please do remember that those which are not twinkling are planets, okay? And those which are twinkling are actually stars, okay? Planets being much closer to us, uh, they don't twinkle. Now, why do stars twinkle? That let us know. Now, let us assume this is the earth and this is the atmosphere, okay, all this gap is giving us atmosphere and I am standing somewhere around here, okay. Now, say there is a star which is at this point, now the light ray, okay, I will show star with a point because star being very far from us it should be considered as a point source of light not a big source point source now from that point source the light ray is entering into the atmosphere it undergoes refraction and by the time it reaches our eye we will see it here remember the path of the light ray is changing but path of our vision part of our sight is not changing we feel as though the light ray the or the star is here okay now by the time the light this star actually reaches this point okay it is undergoing a shift the position of the star is seeing and the, by the time the light that is traveling from the star reaches our eye there is a change in the position also as i already said the atmosphere gases densities keep changing the atmosphere is in motion because of all these things it undergoes refraction multiple number of times and because of this multiple refractions taking place uh, by the uh, light when it is passing through atmosphere automatically the light the light coming from the star it is bright and dim and again bright and dim that is what is making us feel that stars are twinkling now why is that not happening with planets See, planets we can't show with a point size because they are closer to us, we show it with a larger size, which is not a point size. So, if the light is coming from one part of the planet is not reaching us also, the light which is coming from the other part of the planet will be reaching our eye and thereby we can see the planet very clearly. Okay, the twinkling effect is not noticed. Okay, so this is the reason why twinkling of stars is noticed and this is a very important question for your examination as well. Okay, now coming to advancement of sunrise and delayed sunset. We actually see the sunrise or the sky becoming bright even before sunrise. You know the reason why? I'll tell you how. Suppose this is the earth, okay, and I am somewhere around here, okay. Let us assume the sunrise has, or the sun is in this position. There is no way I can see the sun. We are clear with that point. Now let us assume atmosphere is to this point till there, okay, and the sunlight has entered into atmosphere after an entering into atmosphere it undergoes refraction for my convenience i have drawn it very close or let me do one thing i will take the atmosphere relatively closer okay so the light ray when it is entering into atmosphere it undergoes refraction instead of traveling straight like this it is undergoing refraction now I can see the light coming from the sun. Okay, so even though this is the horizon, okay, and the sun has not reached the horizon for that matter, it is far from the horizon. I cannot, I can see the sunlight. Now let us assume sun has come to this position and it is still 
below the horizon but the light rays coming from the sun will undergo a refraction and they are seen okay so this is how we are able to see the sun even before the sun could rise above the horizon so this is what in other words called as advanced sunrise the same thing hap is happening in the other way around okay we get delayed sunset that the delayed sunset is because the sun is going below the horizon but still as the atmosphere is making the light rays bend we will be able to see the sun even after the sunset this is what we call delayed sunset okay now i will try to uh, bring your minds a term which we have learned in our ninth standard that is kindle effect Tyndall effect. What is Tyndall effect? We have learned that colloidal particles, when these uh, are placed in path of a beam of light, they scatter light in all directions. Right? Yes, that is Tyndall effect. This process in which particles scatter light in all directions. Okay, is called scattering of light. When there is a particle, light ray falling on that will be reflecting that light ray or it changes the path of light ray in different directions. So the light ray that is coming to it will be reflecting in all directions. Okay, suppose this is the particle, light ray is coming to it, will reflect in all directions. This process is called scattering of light okay now this scattering of light should explain many phenomenon like why the sky is blue in color clear sky is always blue in color why okay so this is well explained in your textbook also some other applications which are there in your textbook i expect you people to read okay and uh, be thorough and prepare for the test which you will be getting in the next class already there is a there will be a link that is sent uh, which has a questions from human eye and colorful world and that will be an online question online test you will be answering that and then you can uh, go through this video as many number of times as you want okay go through the textbook if you have any doubts feel free to call me anytime all the best for your test. Have a nice day.